So when I play my best rounds, the best scores I've ever shot, you know, it's a game, golf's a game of inches, right? So if you hit a drive down the fairway and it's going towards the bunker, on the day where they shoot 10 under, it hits and kicks left into the fairway. Then the next day you hit it in the exact same spot and it bounces forward and goes into the lip of the bunker. And then on the, you know, you're putting, you make every putt one day, the next day you lip out every putt, but like you're hitting the hole. So it's just like some of it's just the golf gods like pounding you some days where you can't get around sure. it, right? It's the like golf gods. then the next day, you know, you hit a three wood on a par five and you blow it right, it hits a tree and goes two foot from the hole. You go tap in for an eagle. What's up, guys, man? We're back. Another episode of Part 3. One of your co-hosts, Ben Baller. Got my man, G.R. Smith. My man, Stephen Malben. Today's episode, I want to kind of touch on the mental aspect of the game of golf. I didn't know because I just started playing and I started realizing how much, how much of a mental game it really is. You know, just talking to pros and things and finding out that every pro I've ever come in contact with on a PGA Tour, they have a mental coach. Are you serious? Like... Is it that deep? And then I realized, like, I'll be playing and I know to turn my phone off now because a simple thing like a phone call from my wife, like, hey, did you forgot to turn off the light or something, shit like that. Double bogey. Yeah, <laughs> triple, you know? <laughs> so uh, I wanted to start off on the mental part of it, but but I wanted to pass it off to JR because, bro, you played professional basketball. I mean, you won you won rings, right? So what was that transition like, like mentally from playing pro basketball into playing, like, college golf? It's different because, like, obviously basketball is more of a team aspect and, and, and golf is so individual. But playing in, in college, there's a team aspect of the game. You're still out there by yourself. It's not like you just, like, passing it to him and he making a shot. And like, yeah. I right, bet. I'm glad I had to shoot that because I could have just, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, for, like, it's, it's one of those weird aspects of it, but it's it's – grueling as hell I know that from just like individually worried about how I'm gonna do and how I can help my team or how you know I just want to play in general especially from the time that I put into this into the game like golf is one of those is probably the hardest sport to me because I could practice hitting a curveball for three hours and then tomorrow you know I'm gonna be able to start you know eventually start hitting curveballs I could sit here on the range and practice different shots and different all day long and not see the reap or reap the benefits of the working on the range for four hours. Like you might you might see it in certain shots, but like you can literally like look at pros. Pros still hit the ball to bounce. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 one of the hardest games going. So for me, when you put it into actually competing, like when you you got to roll everything in. Like I didn't grow, like I didn't grow up playing the game, so I grew up. That's good. Like okay, cool. You get used to picking it up, but when you're not you're used to when you're not used to putting three four footers, and you got to compete. Those that's that's big. Those shots is those strokes is like that's crazy. Uh, okay, so let's let me touch on that real quick. I hear people talk about this, and these people haven't played pro basketball or even played college. I played college, right? Let's say you're making a free throw. Mm -hmm. It's the fourth quarter. And that free throw count like a motherfucker, right? Like, you oh, know, you're sure. at, you're, you're at, you got two shots. You're at the free throw line. You're making two shots. There's pressure on you, okay? Now, let's say you're on the 18th hole and you got a 10-foot putt and you have to make that putt. What do you think's harder, making that free throw or making that putt? No, I think it's definitely harder making that putt. I mean, the Damn. percentages tell you it is. I Damn. mean, for pros, to make a 10-foot putt, it's like, what, 30%? 33%. 40, 33%. In a, in a basketball, I mean, the average pro was a 75, 80% of free throw. That's true. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Steph shoot 92%, and he's one of the, the best. The best golfer, he's probably, the average is 33. The best golfer is probably, what, 37% <laughs> making exactly. percentage? Like, exactly. That's crazy. Okay, well, then let me break it down for something more realistic. Like, let's say, for instance, a three-pointer to win the game or a 20-foot putt to win the match. Goes harder? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a 20-foot putt, the three is easy. 
Actually, no, that's not fair because, yeah, 20 put becomes to uh, 7%. Shit. Yeah, I mean, Forget it then, man. Yeah, so, I mean, but mentally, though, when you think, like, what are you thinking about when you're shooting a free throw? Nothing. Good. That's exactly, that's all I wanted to hear. That's, that's I think golf's story. like each shot is the same amount of pressure. You can practice it all day long and you, you can shoot free throws in the gym all day and make hundreds of them. But then when you have to make one to win the game, it's a little different. Yeah. Right? But no, with golf, 100%. it's the same shit. Like he's saying, you can practice all day long. You can hit 50-yard nippy wedges all day on the range and then go play and somebody presses the bet and there's pressure and you got a 50-yard shot and the ball's sitting there not moving in the fairway. Everything's perfect and you chunk it three foot or scull it out of bounds. It's like, it can happen like that. Most other sports, for like you doing like layups, it's like the easiest thing you've ever done in your life. You're not going to wake up one day and then airball layups. It's not going to happen. But with golf, you could be on the range at 5 p.m., just hitting the ball perfect, eat dinner, go to sleep, wake up, and come out the next day and be trash. Just trash. <laughs> like you never, ever played yeah. before in your whole life. Like, how did that yeah. happen? I didn't even go out. Trash, I didn't do anything. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm like a beginner. But, no, but why is sure. that? For sure. It's because it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. And I think confidence is, like, serious. And so when he's saying, like, the three-foot putters, when, when you have to – Put every putt three foot and you go on the first hole and you lip one out, it's gonna be a long day. For sure. Then you, in your head, you go to the next one four foot now for birdie, for par, for bogey. Doesn't matter what it's for. You're still thinking about that one you just missed and then you block it a little, push it. The next one, you pull it. The next one, you get just nervous, you don't off. hit it hard enough, right. you leave it an inch short. It's like, is this happening to me? And it 100%. can, it, 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 yeah. you know, it's, it's very easy. To go from being really, really good at golf to something goes wrong and then you, then you're trash. But it's very difficult to go from when you're when you're in a slump and you're playing like shit to like do something to 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 get good again. Yeah. Right. It's almost like you just kind of just write that day off. Yeah. Like today I'm you just, just going to be trash. Like, you know yeah. What? Tomorrow I'll be is. nice again. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know that, I'll be good tomorrow. Tomorrow but today, or the evening that, round. Something's <laughs> going to switch up. Well, there, there's two things I wanted to ask you, Steve, but I'm going to touch on what you just said. I was listening to Ricky Fowler, and I never heard the dude talk before speak about his game. And he was being interviewed on a podcast. And these guys weren't golfers, so they're just free for asking anything. And I don't think a PGA show would ask him this question. But they're like, hey, man, seriously, like, on a 1-to-100, rate your golf game right now. And Ricky Fowler said, I'm probably in the 60-something. And I'm like, whoa, bro. Stu just said on a huge podcast, he's in a D-level game. And, like, Stu's a fucking amazing golfer. And then he's talking about playing on a course that's a nice course and shooting 7, 10, whatever, under. And then when the lights come on, everything changes. And I'm just curious. I don't understand it yet because I haven't played long enough. If you're fucking shooting at the exact, if you're going to Shadow Creek and you're playing and you shoot eight under, now there's some people and there's a light, the lights are on, right? I guess, of course, it matters. Why the fuck can't you shoot eight under, you know, on that same day? Because basically, like, so when I play my best rounds, the best scores I've ever shot, you know, it's a game, golf's a game of inches, right? So if you hit a drive down the fairway and it's going towards the bunker, on the day where they shoot 10 under, it hits and kicks left into the fairway. Then the next day you hit it in the exact same spot and it bounces forward and goes into the lip of the bunker. And then on the, you know, you're putting, you make every putt one day, the next day you lip out every putt, but like you're hitting the hole. So it's just like some of it's just the golf gods like pounding you some <laughs> days where you can't get around sure. it, right? It's the like, golf gods. then the next day, you know, you hit a three wood on a par five and you blow it right, it hits a tree and goes two foot from the hole. You go tap in for an eagle when you just hit the worst shot ever. Yeah, so sure. even though you're hitting really, really, really good shots, that doesn't mean you can score. But. So that's a real weird thing where like, you know, yeah, I, I, I can hit, sometimes I'll, I'll hit four really, really, really good shots in a row and still get a bogey. It's like, I don't know what to do. I'm over here doing my best. I'm pure in the drive. It hits something weird, kicks off into some shit, or it lands in a divot hole. And then the next one, you hit it, and it's flying perfectly at the pin. Everything's perfect, and it hits right by the flag, and then rolls and rolls and trickles, and it goes down a big-ass hill into some pine straw. And then you hit a beautiful flop shot up out of the pine straw, which is impossible to do, and then you lip out the five-footer bogey. It's like, but damn, I actually hit 
a perfect shots, putt, yeah. a great flop shot, a pure seven iron of my life, and a great drive, and I still got a bogey. And so it's tough with golf because you're 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 playing against the course and you're playing against the score. So like, you know, a lot of times when I tell people like I don't really like to keep score that much because it's I like to just try to hit as many good shots as I can, and then I'll look back and say, oh, I shot a decent score. But you know, you can hit a perfect drive, perfect four iron, six foot, read the putt wrong, miss the birdie, and feel like a, a loser. And it just, just it erases the fact that you hit the perfect drive, a perfect four iron, perfect putter Flop. stroke. But you yeah. you know what I mean? You're reading yeah. the green, you can't see it perfectly, and you hit the lip, and it whoop whoop comes to the front. So then instead of being like, well. Good job, Steve. You just hit three really great shots, pretty much four. It's just I'm a loser. I missed a five foot birdie. What a chump. So true. <laughs> I feel that. I One feel thing that. from I don't know many golfers, right? I mean, I've, obviously, I only talk to golfers now, but I've known you for a while. And like, I think that you're a very positive person, which has probably helped me a lot because you've been encouraging when I had a bad round and I'm still new to things. You've always been positive. How do you mentally prepare? Like when you played Av at the Evian, you're in, you're in France, right? How'd you prepare for that? Because I know you want to do well that day. Like what'd you do to prepare yourself for that mentally? I think, I think most of it is you just can't care. <laughs> you just can't care because it's the harder you try, the worse you're going to do. The more you think, the worse you're going to play. It's like when I watch Top Gun, they say, just you don't think, just do. You know what I mean? When you start thinking and you get in your head and you start remembering, oh, I missed the putt two holes ago and you got a putt, you're going to miss the putt. You got to have amazing positive thought and confidence. You know what I mean? Like I was, I was telling my son, he said he, he thinks he could beat me. Right. And he's 10 and he, he really thinks he can beat me. But like, I think I could beat Tony Fino. But well, what <laughs> I think's not actually real, but if right. you don't think you can, I promise you, you can't. 100%. So it has to do with like not beating yourself up realizing that like at any second you could have a disaster and then it's just a matter of like staying positive and going back and just trying to hit the next shot good and like i said just try to hit as many good shots as you can so like it doesn't matter if you're trying to make a five footer for eagle or for double bogey you could pure a putter the same way you can pure a wedge and if you pure it and you read the break right and it breaks and hits the cup it's like that's it. It's like uh, it's, it, there's there's plenty of opportunity to hit golf shots, you know. And so like, I don't really care that much enough to get upset with myself. And I'm also realistic with like I'm not a professional golfer. You know what I mean? And I do practice a lot and I train a lot. And so another thing they say like, trust the work or like uh, trust the process or whatever. So if you practice all the time. You know, like uh, last week I went out on the driving range and I went down the side of the range and I hit, you know, probably 300 little baby wedges out of the high rough and shitty grass and everything. So then you go play the next day and you hit one in that same weird grass. It's like, let me get that wedge. I can't wait to hit this one because you mm -hmm. did it so many times. It's like you saying Steph shooting free throws. It's like he shot a lot of them. It's not a coincidence that he's 93% or whatever the hell, right? 100%. It's like, you know, you got to trust the process and you have to work at it and you have to believe that you're going to make it. Because even him, if he thinks he's going to miss it, what's going to happen? Right. He's not going to make at it. At the same time, too, now that I thought about it and think about it before, you know, I'm just starting to realize like maybe 10 rounds ago that, damn, man, you know what's the difference between hitting at a range? And even if it's a grass range, not a mat range. I'm still going to get a different lie on it. Even on a perfect for part of the fairway, it's a different lie. Like my foot is different. I'm like, I don't know. My foot, my left foot, like feel like it's, I got to adjust that. And that's a whole new feeling. You know what I mean? It's tricky. It's a tricky thing you're trying to do. No, it is. It is. It is. So mentally when you're out there playing, let's say you're just having fun, what's the worst type of foursome, twosome, threesome, whatever it is you go out with? Like, what's that like playing with a bad group of people? I think the ones that bum me out is the people who, aren't very good at golf, <laughs> but keep telling you why they're bad the whole time, <laughs> right? Like the dude slices the ball in the woods and then it's like, I can't believe I'm slicing it. Like my man, you going outside in, you're cutting across the ball. It's going to slice like aim left. No, I normally hit it straight. Another one in the trees. I can't believe this. Ask my, ask my instructor. I was hitting it perfect yesterday. It's like, 
got to hear that shit for 18 holes. That's for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is no fun. It's like, yee. Oh, man. What about you, Jerry? What, like, talk about a bad threesome, foursome, a group of people you play with. You're like, you can't wait for this shit to end, man. Man, like, to me, honestly, bro, like, I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty chill. Again, the bad golfer that just has the thought of being really, really good is really, like, annoying to me. Like, don't get me wrong. Everybody, like, I don't get me wrong. Like, you want to be good. Obviously, I, I get that. But if you're bad, let's pick the pace up a little bit. Like, come on, bro. If, if, if you're going to be going to play worse, then, you know, play faster. Like, that, that guy who takes 12 practice swings oh, man. every single time. Like, bro, like, you're out the hole already. We just, like, come on. That's yeah. that's the worst. Damn, man. Thank God I got you and everyone else because the pace. No one's ever said anything about pace. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Everyone's always like, yo, why are you in such a hurry? I gotta really figure that out with my wife, man. Your girls are cool about playing. You can play they on trip, huh? She don't mind me playing, but like I can't play all day. Like <laughs> I used to be able to play all day. I can't play all day no more. Erica's pretty I chill, right? Kid. I mean, I have kids and stuff too. So yeah, she knows it's good for my mental health to play. And there's there's worse habits you could have. So she's cool with it. But again, it's like it depends on, too, like, who I'm with. And there's, like, some little parts of it that she's not always cool with. You know, if I take Remington or if I take my kids golfing, then, of course, that's fine. But if I go with a bunch of derelicts and gambling and all types of action and stuff and then I'm getting too obsessed with that, then she's not so she's not so cool with that. But going back to the – when as you learn, you, you learn more little, like, um, little sayings and shit. Like, if you ever, say, if you ever hear anyone say – Yo, do you got a pocket? That means pick that motherfucker up and put it in your pocket. You've hit right, it right. enough that hole, right? Yo, you got a pocket? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, when you I haven't nine, heard that one yet. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hear that one. I haven't What's heard that, that one yet. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, you got a pocket? You, you know what's funny is um, flip it in a whole different area. I come from a sneaker background. I've been fucking with sneakers since the early 80s. I'm old. I'm fucking, you know, I've been around it since the first time around. I remember buying Jordan's. You know, at J.C. Penny, at Champs, at different places the first time around. The Jordan 1, obviously, in 80, 85 and stuff. So I've always been very, you know, conscious of sneakers. I'm not as obsessed as I used to be. But coming into golf, you see that the sneakers are a big cult part of it now, right? Like, people, never in a million years would you think people, like, you don't see Jack Nicholas wearing anything but, like, whatever, Foot Joy, who knows. But I was lucky to come in the game and have some Air Maxes, right? And I was just curious, and I already know, me and you going to be aligned. I just got a feeling that he's going to be some other shit. How the fuck do you play in those, bro? What, in slides? Those Slippers? aren't even slides, bro. Them loose old clouds, man. Like, you just... Yeah. I, I mean, I, I want to swing calm. and I don't want to swing violent. So if I play in these, then I swing... I can't swing violent. So I don't really play in them much. I can hit balls in them and practice and such in them. For okay, sure. What, what, do you, what do you play in, like, a, a, a serious, like, game? I mean, God... So, so... Dressing myself is like I dress from the shoes up, right? So it depends on what I'm, what I need to wear on that golf course. So like I'll wear Jordans and Air Maxes and all that, but I'll wear it to like a municipal course where I can wear baggy sweatpants or like basketball shorts, something that automatically locks up to those shoes properly. But I don't really feel comfortable when I'm wearing like athletic sports shoes with like khaki you know, GQ slack pants because I feel like I'm like a assistant coach on a, on a football <laughs> team or something. You know what I mean? So like for me, if it's, if I can wear like baggy pants, then I'll wear Jordans or something that'll hold the pants up properly. But if I'm wearing like slacks, I feel more comfortable in like Vans or like Converse, you know, not for golf, just how I normally dress. So then when I would transfer that over to golf, then I'd feel more comfortable wearing like classic, like foot joy looking, dressy, something wing that, tips, yeah. yeah, like wing tips, like shit mm -hmm. that's gonna match the outfit for the day. Right. So if I'm on a municipal or where they don't care about the dress code, even like at Pebble Beach, like they don't care what you wear. So if I, I could wear like baggy pants at Pebble Beach and I'll wear Jordans, no problem. But if I'm gonna go play Cypress Point, I won't wear Jordans. And it's not because I think that the people at Cypress Port can't handle you wearing Jordans. It's just that I, I know I have to wear slacks with a belt and a tucked in shirt and dress like a certain look. And then I don't want the shoes to throw that off. That's coming from a, a very, very creative mind in the, in, the, in the fashion world, though. 
So that's right. that's a, that's very different from the but average you, person's you're dress pants, perspective. You wear you don't wear Jordans with dress pants. You wear like those Vans silhouette. No, more. for sure, a hundred percent. You know what I mean? That's right. the, the like even with like those pants, like wearing Air Maxes with that in it. No, hundred percent. But a lot of people don't care about that. A lot yeah, of people no, still wearing Nikes with. Totally. Uh, hold on, wait, 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 hold on, Mob. Let's say you're playing AT and T. Okay, you, you you got it. You know, you're you're in there. Break down your outfit for me. Let's say you're going and you're playing. I will probably wear like some dress shoes in in slacks, or I'll wear pants like this that we make that are more like baggy pajama fit a little bit, and then I could wear sneakers or something. And if I'm gonna be walking, I'd, I'm more comfortable wearing sneakers in comfort shit. Like those New Balances are very comfortable to walk in. And then the the best look for me, the best when I see like the tour players dress the best is when it rains because they wear those oversized rain suits because it's got to be big enough to put your shoes on over your pants and all that. So that's when I see the best opportunity to really like put a look together is when you're wearing like the baggy, you know, rain gear, holding up the baggy rain pants with those black Jordans is like, and it just looks because because when I play golf, I don't, I try to dress the same as I do anyway. I just bend the rules a little. I just need a polo and a belt. So if I can put a polo on under a crew neck sweatshirt, you know, I don't have to have a V-neck golf sweater. I could just wear any crew neck in the world that I would normally wear, but I do need to throw on a polo to be respectful or even things like this. Like this is a collar. So like I could, this is what I golf in right here. You, I mean, look like a seasoned golfer, bro. You have a little bucket hat. And then another thing is, too, is that I know that I'm sometimes a little questionable with what I wear when it comes to the traditional golf, old guard, et cetera. So wearing sneakers is just one more, like, little jab at them. So if I throw on the classic foot joys, it's like it kind of brings it back. I if you're you. a little baggy or mm -hmm. a little untucked or this, that, and the other, right. like, you look a little too street if I'm in Jordans, baggy pants, untucked shirt. So, JR, let me ask you, man. So, when you play ball in, in, you know, in the pros, right, obviously shoes is a big deal performance-wise. Like, I don't know how MJ played in Jordan 1s. He said his feet were bleeding in the shoes. When you played basketball and you got basketball, what did you play with, Nikes? I played, when I started off with Adidas, played in Nikes too, though. I played in them and everything. The shoe mattered, don't you think? Yeah. To I a mean, certain the extent? shoe mattered to me but more... More like a Dion. You look good, you feel good, you play good, they pay good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what, like, I, I literally live by that motto. Like, the way I dress and my whole fashion, the way I move around is, like, everything to make me feel good about me. It's funny because, like, I used to go shopping with my boys and whatever. He's like, damn, man, do you think the girls are like this? And they're like, why do you care what they like? Like, yeah. what about what you like, bro? Because you got to wear it. Real tough. So, for me, it's like. Okay, so on a golf course, though, do you feel certain shoes make you maybe play a little better or are you more comfortable? Oh, 100%. Like, like for me, you no. Know, the taxis, when I played at the Garden, the ta I felt like the taxis was like, the taxis and the, and the Cement 4s was like the greatest shoes going. Now that they made these shits and golf shoes, I feel like no, I feel like no lie, every drive, iron shot, I still can't putt worth shit right now. But like, I feel like I'm at the peak of my game. Right, like that's just the. So you played. You were Jordan fours on the golf course. The fours, the twelves, uh, the ones. The ones is only like more, more or less in the desert when it's dry. If it's dry I'm not really muscle. And this is a beautiful fairway, like a beautiful course, and it's like yeah. where it's like not messed up grass. It's tough. Yeah, I like the Jordan yeah, ones. Know, the Jordan ones set up with my little G, GQ dressy look better mm -hmm. than like right. the twelves. Yeah, for sure. Twelves are awkward with that look, but the. the the white Jordan ones look like dunks. Like they, right. I can, I can wear those easy. Yeah, because it, they're also a, a, it's a skinnier silhouette. It's like a fans. Or yeah, like, like a, it's harder for those with the because of the tongue. The tongue is so big. So when you wear like the actual slacks, I'm not slacks, usually wear it with shorts. I don't really wear this. I'm just it's because uh, we're doing a show, no, you know. No, so I'm yeah, just showing I'm off the pony fur. But as far as on a golf course, though, do you have, do you own some like foot joys? Do you own like? I literally just got rid of all of my foot joys, all of my Adidas shoes, all of that. I'm wearing from here on out only Jordans. So in a pro-am, you gonna wear some Jordans? Yeah, for sure. I gotta show, I gotta show love and support the mic, man. That's my goat. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? So any yeah. any time, I mean, Jordans is just Jordan. Then on top of that, you throw some spikes at the bottom. It's crazy. No, for sure. I, feel I got my man Roly down there doing his thing too with him too. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> 
to continue on the fashion level, you know, the whole fashion tip, Steve, how do you feel about um the PGA not letting you know shorts be worn on the course? Like, wh- how do you feel about that, man? I mean, I, I like to dress up. I like to be respectful and dress up. Like, I don't wear shorts really, unless it's like extremely hot and you know. But like, if I'm going, it's like Sunday best. If I'm going to play Riviera, like I'm not wearing shorts, even if it's hot. I feel like there's a respect to the like the people who have played there forever and respect to the member who's hosting me and like I want to do everything we're doing like in the most respectful way and I'm not against like the traditions of golf you know what I mean like even like a bucket hat like hip-hop bucket hats and like that that's part of like me living in New York City like bucket hats are fresh but at the same time like you know like the starter at Band and Dunes he got a bucket hat like this with pins all over it and like so there's like um, a fine line of like being too much. You make people feel uncomfortable, right? So like, I don't really want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. So if it's a matter of like me dressing a certain way to make the people I'm with and the people that are there at Riviera or LACC or Bel Air, like I know what makes them uncomfortable and I know what makes them comfortable, you know? So it's like, I feel like, it's easier just to make people comfortable than it is to like, you know, go out there almost purposely, like I can wear what I want and then they feel uncomfortable. So it's like, it's a fine line of trying to like grow the game and pushing the envelope and, you know, introducing new pieces in and and new looks and new vibes. But like, I don't want to do it so much that it's turning people off. It's like trying to, you got to attract you know, uh, attract bees with honey, not vinegar. <laughs> right. You know right. what I mean? Well, I mean, yeah. let me ask you, like, Payne Stewart, super flashy, you know, fashionable dude. Do you think that he was he was going too far? Do you think he was offensive with his Nah, his because fits? he was doing, like, he was smart. He was doing, like, he was wearing, like, black and yellow in Pittsburgh. And, like, you he wore know, the football team colors. Yeah, he yeah. was wearing the football team colors, and his sponsor was the NFL. So, like, he was wearing traditional golf knickers or whatever right with the socks to match and the foot joys but he would had enough like got the kango yeah he was fresh and he would have the foot joys he'd have them make the shoes to match the the socks to the pants to the shirt to the sweater to the hat and like he was killing it i always thought it was fresh i just didn't know where you stood with that if you think he was too loud or something I think John Daly's pants are too loud. <laughs> you see, he said, he said, you, know I mean? you see my Halloween outfit, right? He's, yeah, he yeah. sent me the exact pants. So, Jr., what's your stance on like dress codes? Like, you you feel like you just you got no problem following them? You like dressing up in the golf clothes and just? It's harder for me because I feel as though I'm already offensive when I walk in. <laughs> Same you know thing. what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. feel like I'm already, like, I'm already out of pocket. They already, like, the, the country club, country club, they don't want me there. Like, if I'm not Tattoos. busting, yeah, I'm, if I'm not busting tables or picking up cars, they don't want me there playing. So it's harder for me to, like, not come in as the traditional vests, polo, five pocket pants, wingtip shoes. Because the moment I, like... And it's funny to me because I've been numerous places and and they've actually made fun of me to be the one guy in the group that's actually black who don't got Jordans on. And it's like, bro, I got to come in, you know. Prim and proper. Prim and proper yeah. because yeah. I don't. They're already looking at you funny. already look at me yeah. funny. So when you wear Jordans, I mean, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, it's cool and trendy. Yeah, all right, cool. It's, it's cool. But if I'd have wore Jordans and you had foot Jordans on, it would have been a problem. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's just a, I, it's a fine line. So nine times out of ten, with shoes, I bring two pair anyway, just because. I see you dress, you tuck in your shirt, and you wear yeah. collared shirts and no, sweaters, and you tailor. Yeah, it's always fine in the golf Everything's course. Everything's tailored and thing. put together. Like, I really like, like, I like dressing. Period. Exactly. So for me, like, to wear sweaters and slacks, you know, like I like that. Me shirt. too. I wear different socks. It's nice. And, you know what I'm saying I'm not the typical dude going. You're gonna be out there with white socks and no, I'm getting the actual <laughs> different. Like, see, that's I feel like I, I can't dress like that yet until I get to like a single handicap, legit. You know, then I'll start dressing really nice. Otherwise, that I feel you like the only way you get to a single handicap is your confidence go through the roof, bro, and you yeah. gotta dress the part. Yeah. I'm telling you, there it is. There it is. Now to flip the script again, I want to talk about respect because you're talking about respect. Something like me, there's there's so many people who follow me now, who listen to my other show. They ask questions and, you know, Ron doesn't tell me everything. We're just talking about fundamentals, right? And one thing I never knew really about was the the actual golf etiquette and the respect of being on a course. Like, like 
my cousin's been playing for 40 years. He played in the junior championships, you know, did all this. And I never knew walking in front of his putt line was that big of a deal. There's a hundred things like that. Mm-hmm. Can, can you break some of them down? Because he started cussing me out. Yeah, there's all that shit. And so, so when I started... What's the three top cardinal rules? Like, you, you can... Like, so people watching this, like, no. Because the people who are watching this the have no I idea. Things I learned when I learned with my pops, I would gamble with my pops. So he would be my partner. And if I won money, I keep it. If we lose money, he would uh, pay. I remember him just being like, you basically can't give your opponent any reason to blame you for their bad shot. So that means if JR's hitting and I'm gambling with him and I'd like tick a lighter when he's swinging, you wouldn't think anything of it, but then he can turn and be like, oh, you tick the lighter. And so you basically have to be so mannered and so like put yourself in their shoes. I caddied in Atlanta for years too, and they used to gamble for tons of money, right? And so what they would do is before you hit, and I still do it today when I'm playing for money, right when I go to the ball, I'm about to hit, I say, here I go, boys. I'm about to hit. For one, I want everybody to watch me when I stunt. And then number two, I want no one to have a fucking, oh, I didn't know you were about to hit. So that's why I I, I said a joke. It's like when I'm about to hit, everybody realize I'm about to hit, which means just stay still for five seconds because I'm about to hit right now. And then everyone will stop and you hit your shot. So you just got to be mindful enough to realize that like any golf's already really, really hard. We all know that, right? So don't do anything that could possibly make it harder. So if you're walking in my man's line, he's got a putt and the green's flat, and then you step in it. When he putts, it's going to hit the bump, and it might move it or some shit, and then he misses the putt, and he's going to look at you and be like, yo, you walked on my line. Don't step on his line or walk behind it, right? Watch your shadow. I mean, you're moving around talking. Yeah, you're silent. But your shadow is right where I'm putting. And I see your head moving in the shadow. And then I'll just stop and say, hey, Ben, back up a little bit. And then you'll be like, oh, my bad. I didn't. I'm like, I know you. I mean, yeah, that's I don't why know. I'm saying it. You know, mm-hmm. it's better off to ask you to back up than it is for me to miss the putt and then be mad at you. Like, People get offensive over that, too, though. Like, when you ask somebody to, like, yo, can you step up to the side for a second for me like (laughs) like bro I'm trying to make this shit like like, like, I'm not asking asking for the hell of it like damn well I mean Jared like what are like your two top pet peeves on on a golf course like someone do for me I'm pretty good like with backswing and everything else because I'm used to playing in front of people so like people on the phone like I hate that like we playing golf and you just like it's just somebody that drifts the distance just always like yeah like bro you playing golf what we doing I think more than anything, like, people are rude to caddies. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, if we if, when we play, we're not going to just go out there and just hit, you know, 18 hole-in-ones. We're going to make mistakes, whatever. A lot of that shit is going to be us and not just on the caddy. I don't really have too many etiquette etiquette rules, but to me, that's etiquette. Like, there's a time and place and there's a way to, to that you can respect the whole golf course. And the caddies are part of the golf course to me. Cause you don't they they work there they don't work with you they're not you just not your personal caddy that you take everywhere with you like you Tiger or Rory or somebody like that so but no me, I'm respectful when it comes to caddies I mean I, I haven't had a whole lot but you know I tip them and I appreciate all the advice they give me and you what know. he's saying is that people are like you, the guy will say the ball is gonna break from the right to the left and then, right. then the dude puts it way too hard and it blows right by the hole and then he looks at the caddy like yo. Yeah. My man, you hit it too no hard. No shit, that's 100%. his fault. You hit it too hard. If you hit it easier, it was breaking in, but you, yeah. you bazooka it past. There's something wrong with people like that regardless, though. Do you know what I mean? Some, Some people are just foul, and they're like mean to waitresses, too. They're like, Be nice. They're like that to the valet person. They're like that to the person who's feet, who serves in their food. They're like that to the caddies. That's just the type of people they are. Real quick, man, the last thing. I want to wrap up the show with this because uh, this is something important to me. I think it's, it's applied to my life. Do you think golf has made you a better person in life? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy? <laughs> yeah. You see his every face? Day. He was like this. Hell every yeah. day. No, I mean, honestly, like. Yeah, man. It teaches you to like golf. So, you know, it's a, it's a sport where you're playing against yourself. You're playing against the rules of golf. You got to call your own penalties. Anyone could cheat. You have endless times to cheat. And like the worst thing you could ever want to be known as is a cheater. Like you can't touch the ball. You're in the rough. No one's around. But I feel like it's the same thing of like, if you move it, it's like you might get like struck by lightning or something, you know? So there's like karma and like different things involved in it. And then 
it, golf teaches you like mannerism and like how to hold yourself and how not to hold yourself. Like me caddying, caddying is where I learned the most of it that's helpful. You know, you see like three, you know, very successful businessmen golfing together and you see one of them's a scumbag and the other ones are not. And they both have enough money in the bank and they're a member of a bougie club and they got great wives and families and you're like, this guy's a piece of shit. And it's like, it don't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter your job. It doesn't matter any of that shit. It's like a, a equalizer. You know, golf is like, you can take someone who looks at you funny as hell. And JR, I know you experience it. Someone might look at you funny at first, and then you birdie the first hole. What happens? Hmm. They're like oh. your buddy then, right? Yeah. yeah, then they're on you. Then they're on you, inviting you to tournaments and... So, yeah, it makes you a better person for for sure. And it, it gives you just horrible breaks sometimes. And you have to dig deep to like, yeah, I hit it perfect and I don't deserve that. But you know what? Who cares? Right. You don't get another chance. That's what you got to deal with the cards you were dealt. For sure. And for so sure. it's how you get through it, you know? JR, you think that golf has made you a better person in life? 100%. I just think like the integrity of the game. Like, you know, you never... For one, you don't cheat the game because it's again, you know, it's just one of those things you got to live with. If that doesn't motivate you or that, that doesn't move you, that you, you know you cheated and got to where you are by cheating, it honestly, it's something wrong with you. I couldn't live with not knowing that I, I didn't earn it. And again, it's, it is the game is a lot like life because again, you could be thrown in divots, you could be hit the perfect shot, be in behind a tree in a bunker, got a punch out or whatever, but it's all in how you recover because in that same punch out, I could chip in from there. You know what I'm saying? And it's like a lot of those things are like life because when you get knocked down and you can hit the perfect shot and have the perfect job and then some hiccup or some bullshit happens and you can have a bogey or a double bogey, but how you would come back, whether it be, the next hole, the next round, the next day, how you per persevere over top of that is just, I think the, the game of golf is builds your character consistently. It keeps you humble. It keeps you at times that it'll give you enough to what you need to like, damn, this shit is really paying off, but then it'll still bite you in the ass like, now nah, you need to keep working. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The biggest tell from bo both of you guys have said, because you guys have been playing longer than I have, is, is um, it is a gentleman's game. I didn't become successful in life by accident. I'm talking about outside golf. I had to go through adversity. You know what I'm saying? I had to be resilient. And I know after I hit a double bogey, maybe two double bogeys, come back with that par, come back with whatever it is. I don't have that many birdies in my life. But I'm just saying, I just, just wanted your opinion about it because I know it's changed my life. Even as a father, husband, and everything, it's just calmed me down. I come home. You, you know? know what I heard once? That golf is so hard that it makes, like, being a good father, husband, cooking dinner, getting your kids straight, doing homework, putting them to school, even going to work. That shit is easy <laughs> compared to how hard golf is. So after sure. you play golf for five hours, you think about it. If I go and I shoot 82, 83, so that means that's like at least 50, 60 times where I tried to do something and I got the opposite result. Like I went for the feeling of greatness and I got the feeling of shit. All day for five hours straight, I just feel like shit. And it's like after you get pounded with that much hard, like, rejection, rejection, then it's like going home and being a good dad. It's like, jeez, let a me layup. at it, baby. That's a layup. I'm a, it's a layup. Yeah. It's the easiest thing I ever did. No, so it puts talk. things in perspective of, like, this shit is hard, man. Golf is, is, is very, very hard. You know what? And I'm going to end the show on this. I'm just going to say this. Two weeks ago, I called Ron after I played um, – I think I shot like an 87 or 88. Three months ago, I would have killed to shoot that score. Like I would have literally killed somebody to shoot that score. I felt like I played the best I've ever played and the score didn't reflect on that. Mm -hmm. And I said that to him, he goes, man, you're becoming a golfer. That was the best score. I, ever, I mean, that was, that was the best I ever felt like I played. The score didn't match what I played, but I'm just telling you. And it's funny, Ron said the same day. So you know what, man? Golf can make really good people do really bad things cheating, lying, all that shit and everything. He's like, guy's a good person. For some reason, he just won't accept the L in golf. And, you know, and he told me too, he goes, stop posting the good scores. Post that 90 score. I told this. you that too. When I yeah. play, if, 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 I'm, if, I'm, if I'm three under after 13 holes and I have a b double and a double, I don't mind. When you have a bad day, just think of it as like, you. it's not like you want to just have bad shots just to run your handicap up. But like, 
don't worry. There's another positive side of it is, is that your handicap is not going down. Yeah. You know, and you don't want to have a low ass handicap where you can't. You've said that to me a bunch of times, bro. These guys always tell me his handicaps, this, that. I'm like, oh, you want that shit to go the other no, direction. No, I do. I do. When you get down too low, you're going to get yeah, you're less torched strokes. when you're going to gamble. Smash, bro. Yeah, you're going to get roasted. Um, so thanks, guys, man. Appreciate you guys again. My partner, JR, my boy, Stephen Mauban. But yeah, that's it for this episode. We're going to come back. We're always going to talk about life, culture, the game of golf, you know, from three different perspectives. And that's it. I appreciate you guys joining in, man. Got a pocket. <laughs> <laughs>